socialism and communism are now here and the prevailing ideologies in the United States where seemingly everything that was up is down, that was wet is dry, and that was green is now red. Buckle up, folks, because, and I truly wish I didn't have to say this, but you all deserve the truth, it's going to get much worse before it gets better. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me one more time on things that need to be said while the social media powers that be still allow it. For MRC TV, I'm Nick Kingadis. Before I begin, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Rumble. Non-corporate content creators are being banished from society left and right, so why not use a platform that at the very least hasn't censored our content yet? Now, on with the show. Folks, this week's episode is going to be aimed at the politicians who pulled back the curtain and showed us that the Democrat and Republican labels are just that, advertising. Neither name means much anymore because the majority of both either believe the same things or mysteriously, for once in their lives, shut their mouths when an issue is a little too hot button for them. The vast majority of these people, at least in the last hundred years, have proven that they care not one bit for the people, but instead for the power the people can relinquish to them. There are so many examples of swamp dwellers, and living in the DC area, I can safely confirm that it is indeed a swamp, but there are so many politicians that have pulled the wool over our eyes for so many years that the people don't know what to believe anymore, and a confused populace isn't a united populace, and that's how they want it. Now, there's one thing that all these people I'm going to mention have in common. Think about it while I'm going along, but I'll let you know what that commonality is towards the end of the video. Take a look at our fearless leader and what he said just yesterday. It was a murder in the full light of day, and it ripped the blinders off for the whole world to see the systemic racism the Vice President just referred to. I'm sorry, aren't you and the real president standing behind you in charge of said system that is supposedly racist? Just sign another executive action. Continue to show the world how you disregard the people just like they do. Make us just another country instead of the exceptional country you're steering us away from being. Come on, man. Whether it's Barack Obama. I explained that I never thought Donald Trump would embrace my vision or continue my policies, but I did hope for the sake of the country, that he might show some interest in taking the job seriously. But it hasn't happened. Or the guy Obama blamed all his shortcomings on only to become buddies, George W. Bush. The former president supports a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants if they pass a background check and pay back taxes. And if that were the proposal, by President Biden, would you lobby your own party to support that? Well, I am right now. Um, I don't know whether my own party listens to me or not, it's another question. It doesn't matter what party these people say they represent. They represent no one but themselves and their elitist party, of which none of us are invited. Call me crazy, but if someone badmouthed me for years, I wouldn't be in any rush to be friends with them. Call it self-respect, if you will. There's octogenarian California activist Maxine Waters who, and I don't care what anyone says about this, took a requested armed police escort to Minneapolis, a place that she doesn't represent, to tell the activists temporarily residing in that community to not accept the verdict of a trial that was determined from the beginning. Not just manslaughter, right? I mean... Oh, no, not manslaughter. No, no, no. This is, this is guilty for murder. I don't know whether it's in the first degree, but as far as I'm concerned, it's first degree. It's coming from what happens if we do not get, get what you just told? What should the people do? What should protesters on the street do? I didn't hear you. What happens? What should protesters do? Well, we, we got to stay on the street. Uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, they know that we need business. And not one Democrat had the stones to say what she said was wrong. Instead, you have activists in the media, this one ironically from PBS, which means she's paid by our tax dollars, chastising the White House for not ardently defending Waters. I wonder why the White House isn't also coming to the defense of Representative Waters, given the fact that she's now facing an onslaught of attacks, especially by, I would say, Republicans. I wonder why the White House isn't saying, we, we back what she said about being confrontational. She was obviously not threatening violence. 
there are civil rights leaders that are saying that's what that's what civil rights is, is to be confrontational, to be active. And then you have people like Nancy Pelosi, who trots out Bible verses when it's convenient. Last night when I saw the president hold up the Bible, I was thinking of so many things in the Bible that would have been appropriate uh, in terms of uh, the humanity of all people in our country. But then praises the death of a drug addict by essentially comparing him to Jesus Christ and how he died for our sins. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. And how about Democrat, <coughs> excuse me, Republican, see how there's no difference anymore? Representative Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He likes to preach to anyone that will listen about integrity and sanity. He tweeted this a couple of weeks ago. Quote, thread about the need for sanity. Politics was invented to take differences in beliefs, argue them out, try to convince, and compromise when able. Not an end in itself, but a way to live together peacefully as different people. When politics fail, you get violence. January 6th. Unquote. Wrong, sir. Politics were invented for people like you who are power hungry to disrupt systems that work. Whether those systems were historically good or bad is another issue. No, sir. Philosophy was invented to debate differences in beliefs. Politics is a poison of which you are a manufacturer. When politics fail, the people win. When philosophy fails, you get a breakdown of civil discourse. When you get a breakdown of civil discourse or you have the public square i.e. social media, actively attempting to kill civil discourse, you get confusion and violence. And when you get confusion and violence, you get a society that fails. Why do you think that all great societies throughout history have fallen from within? It's because of power-hungry politicians like that. Again, whether those societies were a net good or net bad is a different video, but good or bad, politicians have never changed. They either made the good societies bad or the bad societies worse. To be fair, these are blasphemous people. Let's take one more look at what Pelosi said. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. So many of them carry and clutch their Bibles, and for so many of them, their sole motivation for doing so is votes. These are godless people motivated by what they can take from the people. And if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. The bottom line is that whatever we as Americans do going forward, we have to stop putting so much stock and stop capitulating the power that we have to people who care not one bit about any of us. Just remember, when it came to knowing what the government wanted to do to your health care. We have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. So what do all of these society killing parasites have in common? They've been part of government in one way or another for the majority of their lives. Even before Obama became an Illinois state senator in 1997, through his presidency that ended in 2017, Obama used his law degrees to garner him positions as a community organizer in Chicago. George Bush is known for being both the governor of Texas and the president of the United States, but did you know that Bush's political aspirations began almost 20 years before he became the Texas governor? Yeah, Bush ran for a seat in the Texas House in 1978. Not only that, but he was an advisor to his father, George H.W. Bush, beginning in 1988. We all know that Joe Biden has never held a real job, <laughs> at least not in the last 50 years that wasn't taxpayer funded. So let's just move on. Nancy Pelosi's career in politics began in the 1960s when she interned for then-Senator Daniel Brewster of Maryland. In 1976, she was elected as a member of the Democratic National Committee from California. After that, Pelosi was essentially gifted a Democrat stronghold seat in the U.S. House in 1987 when medically ill rep Sala Burton endorsed Pelosi to take over her seat, which was occupied for 19 years prior to that by her husband, Philip Burton, who passed his seat on to Sala when he became ill. Pelosi is the epitome of a career politician. Maxine Waters has been an elected official since 1976 when she was 38 years old. She's now 82, which means she's been an elected politician for nearly 45 years. Even for a few years before her 1976 election, Waters worked for other politicians who helped her get her foot in the door. She's been an elected official six years longer than I've been alive. Yeah. She's really oppressed, much like Al Sharpton. Adam Kinzinger has been in office for 10 years straight, and he's only 43 years old. Kinzinger is still an active member of our military, and for that, I thank him for his service. 
All the same, it doesn't look like he's going to be anything but a polarizing politician going forward. And remember, he already has 10 years in office under his belt. Oh, and when he was 20 years old, Kinzinger was elected and served for five years as a McLean County, Illinois board member from 1998 to 2003. Career politician all the way. All in all, these six politicians I just gave you a breakdown of, yeah, they've been in politics an estimated 220 years, at least combined. Whether Trump is a factor in it or not, draining the swamp has never been more important. So. What do all of you think out there? Did I miss the mark on this one? Will the social media Gestapo come after me again for this one? Or were these things that needed to be said? Let me know in the comments where I do read most and reply to some. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Rumble. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, share, and give it a thumbs up. Those are the best ways to help these videos reach more people. And it's the best way to let us know you want us to keep these videos coming. Subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that YouTube might actually let you know when MRC TV comes out with a new video if they haven't censored it or taking it down yet, like us on Facebook and check out more of our work at mrctv.org. For MRC TV, I'm Nick Kingatis.